gentlemen, you have found the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, the Tuesday evening edition, the 10th day of August 2021. It was a, a stormy midday today. I'll tell you, trying to time out these thunderstorms in this pattern is kind of a, a fool's errand, if you will. I kind of thought the afternoon would be fairly active today, but everything happened a few hours earlier than I thought it would uh, around uh, late morning, early afternoon. We had a pretty good round of showers and storms that rolled through, and then not much happened for the rest of the afternoon. But these storms did mean some business right around midday. Several reports of wind damage along the uh, Route 39 corridor, stretching from just east of New Philly over through Carrollton and uh, heading into southern Columbiana County as well. In fact, we had some uh, reports of trees and power lines down around Selineville in southwestern Columbiana County just after noon today. And uh, scattered wind damage also found in parts of western PA from earlier on today. Now, by comparison, things are pretty quiet as of this recording, a little after 7 p.m. Nothing on the radar, in fact, and after a fairly cloudy period, the sun has come out in the last couple of hours, allowing temperatures to warm up, and it is really, really humid outside. Here's what we have on the radar in the state of Ohio. This one cluster of thunderstorms out in the northwestern part of the state. Now, this uh, cluster is nearly stationary. Do a quick loop on this over the last hour and you can see this isn't moving much. So this is producing a flood threat between Fort Wayne and Lima. It remains to be seen if we will get new activity trying to pop up kind of out of nowhere in northern Ohio and northeast Ohio uh, this evening. Now the atmosphere is destabilizing a little. We're heading towards sunset, yes, but the sun has come out and it's really warm and especially really, really humid out there. So I'm not going to be surprised if we have randomly placed pop-up showers and storms this evening. It's something that we'll just have to keep an eye on for the next handful of hours. Get a load of these dew points, though. Yikes! 73, the uh, 7 p.m. dew point officially at the airport, 72 in Columbus. Chicago's at 76. Milwaukee and Green Bay dew points in the upper 70s. It is a very, very tropical air mass. Over the last 24 hours, here's a look at some actual rain gauges. The big winner was in southern Columbiana County, thanks to some storms that we had last evening. And then during the midday hours today, so 0.86 in the Calcutta, Glenmore area in southeastern uh, Columbiana County, north of East Liverpool, uh, 0.39 uh, New Garden and heading over towards Hanoverton and into the Guilford Lake area, about a third of an inch once you get up towards Latonia and Boardman at our downtown studios up on the roof here at WFMJ, 0.19. Generally, amounts got lighter as you head off to the north, only a few hundredths once you're up towards Transfer and Lake Wilhelm, my favorite lake over in Mercer County. And over towards Sandy Lake and New Lebanon, places like that. Not a lot in the rain gauges over there. Here's a look at our the latest run of our high-res futurecast. Now, this thing has not done very well in the last 24 hours with the placement and the timing of thunderstorms. So we're going to take all of this with a big grain of salt. It's going to be kind of a what I like to call a now-cast situation this evening. It's hard to rely on any of these models to, to really pick up on what's going on. In fact, this model's swinging and missing completely on that stuff that's out in northwest Ohio. It doesn't know it exists. But anyway, as we head through the overnight, it shows not much happening. But again, uh, it's not going to be a shock at all in this kind of an air mass to see a, a pop-up shower or a storm uh, between now and sunrise tomorrow morning. What about our Wednesday? I think tomorrow is going to end up being a sunnier day than today, allowing temperatures to get warmer than today. That being said, there's not a lot going on in the atmosphere to instigate showers and storms other than the fact that it's just hot and humid. We don't have the front coming through. There's not a lot of stuff going on above our heads in the upper levels of the atmosphere to trigger showers and storms. So I think the coverage of showers and storms tomorrow will not be very high. Our model has basically nothing in the afternoon. So it's going to be a low coverage but potentially high impact kind of a day tomorrow. Any storm that does get going in this kind of an air mass can mean some business, can bring down some wind and produce a tropical blinding downpour. But again, the number of thunderstorms out there won't be very high. As we head into the day on Thursday, the same air mass overhead, in fact, it gets hotter on Thursday. And we'll talk about the heat index values in just a second, but this will be an oppressive day. The front's still way off to our north and west on Thursday. There's a little bit more upper level support on Thursday for thunderstorm formation in the afternoon. So again, any thunderstorm that manages to get going could mean some business. Now, this is the day on Friday that I think it is a good bet that a lot of us are going to see some heavy, gusty storms maybe as early as the morning hours, but especially as we get into the afternoon on Friday, this is a decent summertime front heading our way. It's not exactly a front that's going to usher in a lot of cool air, but there's a big dew point spread on either side of this front, so it is a much drier air mass coming. 
And so uh, that'll be a good trigger for showers and storms on Friday. But check out Thursday's heat index values. This may end up being the most oppressive day of the entire summer. We had a day kind of like this back in late June where the high got to 93. I think the heat index topped out in the upper 90s. If we do see a heat index getting up to 100 and 102, that would probably be the high water mark for the entire summer. And this may uh, provoke the National Weather Service to hoist uh, some heat advisories for Thursday. So this is going to be a day to really take the heat seriously. If it's When it's not raining on Thursday, that is heat that can be dangerous to a lot of populations, even relatively healthy people. If, you're, if your job is in construction or being on a roof or something outdoors, you got to take this really seriously on Thursday. So what I have as far as the severe weather risks over the next few days is the lowest risk of the next three, probably Wednesday, the highest on Friday, because again, we have that front coming our way on Friday. And behind the front, the storms are swept away for the weekend, and so is the humidity as well. Uh, oftentimes, we show you the Storm Prediction Center outlooks for days one, two, and three. Beyond days three, they kind of do a kind of a broad brush outlook for days four through eight. They don't get into specifics as far as the individual threats or anything like that. Uh, around here, it's pretty rare for any day in the four to eight day outlook to be highlighted. Usually the confidence is too low in severe weather prospects days four and beyond for them to, to highlight our area. But they do have, an, on day four, a 15% chance of severe weather across most of Ohio and most of Pennsylvania. So uh, that would probably translate, I would guess, uh, tomorrow into a day three slate risk issuance uh, for a lot of our readings. So uh, uh, potentially a big ticket severe weather day on Friday. The dew points are going to stay way up there through the daylight hours Friday, even into parts of Friday night, but those dew points will be crashing by Saturday morning, mixing down into the 50s in the afternoon and not much better than the mid 50s on Sunday. But it still looks pretty toasty. Uh, I think August is, is going to go into the record books as more than likely our warmest month compared to average for the summer season. I think we finished June at plus three. Uh, July was a shade cooler than average. I think August uh, may top June as far as the uh, departure from average, given the way the longer range look. And you see that reflected here on the Climate Prediction Center 8 to 14 day outlook. All right, if we have any storms that pop up this evening, you know I'll keep you updated on social media and on 21 News Tonight at 11. Thank you as always for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you back here on Wednesday.